I used to play in a lot of bands, um, rock bands and funk bands, and then we started incorporating like turntables and MPCs and drum machines. So, and that was like, you know, mid to late 90s. Um, and ultimately, we realized that we could have no, we don't need the band. We formed a group called Seed Frequency Crew, and we shopped our, in the late 90s, we were shopping our demos around a lot. We landed a deal with a label in Miami. And um, also at that time, we were getting way into like the Miami Electro stuff. I mean, we grew up in like upstate New York and no one was playing Miami bass. The electro came from living in Miami. I would go to these hard places to see drum and bass. And the drum and bass was always stuck in the side room. And the main room was breaks and electro. And I'd never seen that, that you know, because in New York it would just be like house or techno. So we naturally, we just started making more like electro -y stuff. And then also you had like the, the whole electro clash invasion happen around 2001. After our group, we sort of split up around like 2004, 2005, and everyone more or less went solo. And the solo stuff I was doing, I felt was a continuation of electric bass and down tempo. So I signed to Ghostly in like 2007, and I toured in like 2008. And when I went on tour, especially it was my first time like touring the middle of America, and everyone, all the opening DJs were playing dubstep, pretty much. The first time I tried doing a dubstep tempo was um, around 2009 when uh, Adult Swim approached me for their ATL remix compilation. And um, what they were doing was taking a whole bunch of Atlanta rappers, acapellas, and, and giving them to um, current electronic producers. And, um, and I figured that was the perfect time to give it a shot, especially because most of the um, Atlanta rap is at 70 BPM. So I, I did a remix of Young Dro, and I thought that I was pretty satisfied. I think the thing that's happened most recently in the past, even in the past two, two or three years, is um, people, people taking the dubstep uh, mentality and doing every tempo with it. Back in the days, you couldn't if you had the, if the main room was like progressive trance mm -hmm. you would you wouldn't think to mix like you would keep like the dr the junglists and the drum and bass people away from that room you, there just wouldn't be much crossover um but now it's like you know everyone's in one room and you know a song might go into a really cheesy breakdown but then it, you know 30 seconds later it's it's it's, it's in this like screaming womp um, and and everyone seems to enjoy it uh, equally. I I think you could now now and probably next year you could parallel it to like the amount to rock and roll basically where there's so many kinds of rock and roll, but yeah sure the loudest I do think uh, the loudest friend of it is going to be for the stadiums you know like yeah. metallic always going to work better at the Madison Square Garden as opposed compared to like the strokes or something. Really smart dubstep, it, it's like burial or something, you know, that has its place, but it's, it's not gonna fill stadiums uh, only because of the, uh, the aesthetic of the, the sound. Well, I wanted to give you guys a range. I mean, it's nice that I had, with 10 songs, you can really go into a range of stuff. Um, and, um, you know, my background, I, I've done I've done ambient stuff, I've done mellow stuff, but I've also done some more harsher, uh, heavier club stuff. So I wanted to show sure that range, and then I also wanted to use to challenge myself. Can I do this with some outboard equipment? A synthesizer like Massive that was great because it really pushes you to take all of your your knowledge of analog synths and like apply it to to you know to this little square on the screen. Um, and then, of course, uh, I wanted all the, you know, I'm very specific if I'm going to use distortion or overdrive or I, I like to do that through like a rack of effect. The best uh, thing for any producer is having a deadline and, you know, making, forcing yourself to just 
to knock it out and not not second guess your work and just do it. Some commercials and stuff, they only need really 10 seconds sometimes of your your song. There could be that 10 second snippet that you need. It, you just have to find it. I wanted to give enough change in one song where um, that there was there was pieces you could you I mean you could take the first 10 seconds or you could jump to the middle of the song and it's it's gonna sound different. I like um, Coolin' Out. Coolin' Out was an earlier one I did, um, and that was, I wanted to do something a little more emotional, which I think would, I think having like emotional chords works if someone's going to be talking over your, uh, over some music. I also want, you know, I wanted to try more har harsher stuff, so uh, I feel Point Break was a standout for me, because I did a lot of cutting and pasting, and I ran the bass through a lot of uh, this rack and a lot of distortion.